All right, going to do a video on the creatures and beings that exist in the underworld. Because the Bible does teach that there are these creatures in the underworld. Or these beings, these dead creatures in the underworld. And I'm going to show you that from scripture. What these creatures, that there are creatures that exist in the underworld. I'll put it that way. So first of all, there are dead things that are being formed, quote, under the waters, unquote. Turn to Job chapter 26, verse 5. Dead things are formed from under the waters and the inhabitants thereof. So there's dead things being formed under the waters. Well, where is that under the waters? In the underworld. That's where these dead things are being formed. Uh, these dead things, I do believe, are the locusts, the hybrid locust creatures described in Revelation chapter 9, verses 1 to 11. Turn there. And the fifth angel sounded... And, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, and as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and un unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And was commanded them that they should hurt not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them was given that they should uh, not kill them, uh, but that they should be tormented five month, months, and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were unt like unto horses, prepared unto battle, and on their, for on their heads were, as it were, crowns of gold, and their faces were as the faces of men, and they had hair as the hair of women, and teeth as the teeth of lions, and they had breastplates as it were the breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings were as the sound of chariots and many horses, uh, ch chariots of many horses running to battle. Uh, and they had tails like unto scorpions, and they were st stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt, hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which was the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Ad Adion, Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. So there's these hybrid locust creatures in the bottomless pit. And Apollyon, who I do believe is Satan, uh, that's why I believe the angel of the bottomless pit is, I do believe it's Satan. Uh, he opens the bottomless pit and looses these creatures out from the underworld. So there's these hybrid locust creatures that exist. I believe these are actually the dead things that are described in Job 26 verse 5 that are being formed under the waters in the underworld. Next, the beast will ascend out of the bottomless pit, the Antichrist will ascend out of the bottomless pit during the time of Jacob's trouble. Turn to Revelation chapter 17, verse 8. And the beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and shall go and go into perdition. And they, shall, they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was and is not, and yet is. So the beast comes out of the bottomless pit. Revelation chapter 11, verse 7. And when they shall finish their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. So at some point in the time of Jacob's trouble, the beast is in the bottomless pit and he comes out of it. Very, very interesting. Also, there are fallen angels in chains of darkness and hell. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 to 4. Sorry, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4. My apologies. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment. Jude 1, 6. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, and hath reserved in, in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. That's the judgment day, obviously. And this is a scripture that, that I believe ties into this. Psalms uh, 82, verses 6 to 7.
I have said, Ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High, but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. The princes, I do believe, you know, it's obviously, you know, I believe in type. The princes is Satan. In John chapter 16, verse 11, John chapter 12, verse 31, and John chapter 14, verse 30, Satan is called the prince of this world. In Ephesians 2, 2, Satan is called the prince of the power of the air. So I do believe that the prince is referring to Satan, and they're going to fall. I believe it's referring to these angels who are in the chains of darkness in hell. Also, there are possibly, possibly, it's just a theory, I'm not saying this for certain, it's possibly, possible that there are flesh-eating worms in hell as well, in the underworld. Uh, Mark chapter 9, verses 43 to 48. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into hell, into the fire that never that sh that never shall be quenched, where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. And if thy right if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that shall that never shall be quenched, where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. And if thy right eye offend thee, cut it off. For it is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye, than having two eyes, to be cast into hell fire. Or the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Now this worm, I want to touch on this worm a little bit. Turn to Isaiah chapter 66, verses 22 to 24. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. And it shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me, for their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. Okay, the carcasses looking upon the carcasses in the underworld. Well, when you see a dead carcass, what do you see feeding on that dead carcass? Worms, maggots. And some more proof to kind of back up this little theory I have. Job chapter 24, verses 19 and 20. Drought and heat consume the snow waters, so doth the grave, those which have sinned, the womb shall forget him, the worm shall feed sweetly on him, he shall no, be no more remembered, and, his, and wickedness shall be broken as a tree. The worm shall feed sweetly on him. And what does it mean to be no, no more remembered? It means you're go to hell. So there's worms, you know, that would feed sweetly on him. So it's possible that in the underworld that there's flesh-eating worms down there. It's possible. Not saying it, it's just a theory, but... There are creatures that exist in the underworld, in the bottomless pit, in hell, you know. There's also there's also the Old Testament saints in Abraham's bosom, which of course they're not there anymore, but there are creatures that exist in the underworld. It's uh, very, very interesting to look into this. But I just want to show you guys that, the creatures and beings that exist in the underworld. There's probably others too, these are just a brief overview of some of the creatures that exist in the underworld, that were formed in the underworld, and also that exist or will come out of the underworld. So I want to show you guys that. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.